Welcome back to Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. I'm Bill and today we're diving into the wild and controversial history of Aurora's Monster Scenes model kits from the 1970s. These kits stirred up a lot of talk back in the day and I've got nearly all of the modern re-releases built and painted to show you. But before we get into all that, Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss any of our future adventures. In today's adventure, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most controversial lines of model kits ever produced. Monster scenes. That's right. I've got my reissue kits right here in front of me to inspire this trip down memory lane. We've got Frankenstein, Vampirella, The Victim, and Dr. Deadly. And over here we have the pain parlor and gruesome goodies. While I never had these as a kid, when I saw these re-releases, I had to have them all. These kits bring back such fond memories of playing, painting, and using your imagination. One thing that sets them apart is how interactive they are. You can swap the arms and legs. They feel almost like action figures. That's what makes them so much fun. Unfortunately, that's also what made them so unpopular with parents at the time, and it was how gruesome they were. I mean, accessories like the hanging cage and the pendulum really ruffled some feathers, causing quite an uproar. But enough about that for now. Let's take a look at the history of monster scenes. During the 1960s, the onslaught of shock theater swept the nation creating a generation of what would be known as monster kids. Classic horror films featuring Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman, and others were dominating TV screens, and kids couldn't get enough. So it didn't take long for toy manufacturers like Aurora to jump on this new craze. Aurora had massive success with their monster model kits like the Aurora Monster Models series. But by the late 60s, sales started to slow down and Aurora had to get creative. They re-released those kits with glow-in-the-dark parts, which kept things going for a while. But by 1970, kids wanted more than just static models. They wanted something they could pose and play with. This is where Monster Scenes comes in. In 1971, Aurora introduced a series of interactive monster models designed for kids to assemble, pose, and play with, rather than just admire from a shelf. But it wasn't long before controversy caught up with them. So what made these kits so controversial? Well, monster scenes didn't hold back. They featured everything from gruesome accessories like chains and cages to characters like the evil Dr. Deadly, the seductive Vampirella, and the unfortunately named Victim. Some of these sets, like the Pain Parlor and the Pendulum, went a little too far for parents' tastes at the time. The box art even had the slogan, Mix em and Match em, rated X for excitement. Not the best marketing choice, right? Protests sprang up. Angry parents made their voices heard, which led Aurora's parent company, Nabisco, pull the plug. The sets were shipped off to Canada, where they sold out the remaining stock, and that was the end of the line. Or so we thought. In 2008, the Monster Scenes line came back, much to the joy of monster kids everywhere. Dencom and Mobius models re-released classics like Dr. Deadly Frankenstein, The Victim, the Hanging Cage, and more. They even introduced never-before-seen kits like the Sabertooth Rabbit, Feral Cat, Skeleton. Some of these I've built and painted right here. Let's take a closer look at the details. And here we have all of the different model kits put together into one big diorama. And here out front, you can see the gruesome goodies. The first table has the saber-toothed rabbit with his little friend the mouse on top of his bell jar. 
there's a candle burning on it. The next table has lab equipment, a skull, another burning candle. You can see some test tubes back there in the background with some solutions in them. And then here is the big zap generator, which Dr. Deadly uses to power all of his evil experiments. And let's move some of this stuff out of the way. We'll put the zap generator over here and we'll take the saber tooth rabbit and his little friend the mouse and put them up here on the second level where the hanging cage is. I'll put this table over here. Now, what's going on behind Dr. Deadly there? Well, that's the pain parlor where Frankenstein has been strapped to a lab table. Behind Dr. Deadly, you can see some lab equipment with the skeleton hanging from it. And behind Dr. Deadly over here is the dungeon with the chameleon rat crawling up the wall and there's a coffin down there with a steel grate on top of it and a little rat crawling across the top of it we'll put this table back over here we'll move the coffin out of the way and you can see down into the dungeon hey hey Vicky we'll move her to the side and see that rat crawling around on the floor and back there there's a grate being held up with a stick and there's even a chain back there so if you want to chain her up you can chain her up in the dungeon and there's Dracula coming down the stairs and the pendulum right there and then over here is Vampirella riding on the giant insect there's a saddle built into his neck just so she can ride on it. She had two sets of legs, riding legs and standing legs, so she could ride that giant insect. And then up here, hanging from that gibbet, is the hanging cage with another victim in it. And there's a brazier of red hot coals with a poker that you can put, on, put in it until it's white hot to poke the victim with. <laughs> Yes, here it is in all of its glory. And you can even see the animal pit back there with the old dragon rat in there. Dr. Deadly's evil experiments in the Dungeon of Doom. His secret laboratory. Keep out. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about Monarch Models who released an awesome Dracula and Jekyll Hyde set before they sadly went out of business. This was one of their final kits, but the attention to detail was amazing. And as you can see, here's my Dracula build. I never built uh, the Jekyll Hyde, but someday I'll build him and paint him up and add him to the set. Check it all out. The Monster Scenes model kit stirred controversy for their time, raising concerns about the influence of horror imagery on kids. But for those who grew up with these kits, they were more than just gruesome toys. They were a gateway to creativity and imagination. In many ways, the controversy only cemented their legacy in pop culture, making them highly sought after by collectors today. While the kits may have pushed boundaries, they also reflected a unique era when horror was making its mark on toys and model kits alike, leaving behind a lasting impression that fans still appreciate to this day. Well, that's it for today's deep dive into monster scenes. I hope you enjoyed it. If you love vintage model kits, toys, and collectibles, be sure to click here to subscribe, and if you want to check out another cool video just for you, click over here. And as always, keep on collecting and stay fantastic. We'll see you next time on Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. In the meantime, have a good journey.